Hello and welcome to New Junction. So after a bit of a time out over the Christmas period, it's time to get on with some progress. Now, the key word for this video is going to be progress because I'm determined to get something done. Um, I've not really done much, um, as you can probably imagine, with the lack of updates um, recently. So I'm determined to get started with some details and to make a, uh, hopefully, a vast improvement to the current scene you're looking at. Now, even though I've not spent much time, particularly over the Christmas holiday, in the loft, um, for some reason, the station does need a bit of work. Um, I think the cold's had an effect on it. Some of the uh, detailing started to fall off. Some of the glue in places has come, come loose. So the station does need a bit of TLC. But the ultimate goal for uh, this update <clears throat> is to tackle all those issues and make a start on the uh, scenic back to this part of the layout. If not this half of the layout in total. Now whether I'll get the whole way on this uh, update, I'm not sure. Interestingly enough, it's amazing, even though I've not been up here, how much of a mess the layout becomes. So the first things first, I'm going to clear the trains off the track and clear the baseboards down, ready to do some work. And I'll tell you what, it's good to be back. So there we are. It's always good to get your layout clean and tidied before you start with any new work, which is inevitably messy and then therefore leads to more cleaning and tidying. <laughs> it's better that way, trust me. Right now, for this area at the back, so I was basically going to fill in the back wall and start uh, uh, filling in the back scene there. Uh, initially, I wanted to use a uh, plastic card, textured plastic card, if you can just about see that. Um, see if I can zoom you in. There you go. You can see it's textured plastic card. And uh, these are strips which I've had in place and just testing. Now I've given these um, a couple of coats of paint and practice, practice runs, etc. Um, that's great for this part of the station. Um, <clears throat> but as soon as we come out here, um, it doesn't quite work for me. I didn't think it looked the best. Um, it's probably to say my skill set isn't good enough to make uh, something look good out of that until I saw uh, some Metcalf uh, stonework so this is the uh, cut stonework pack I've got myself um, I've got myself some retaining walls in the same uh, kit now I've always been a bit uh, wary of card kits in the loft because of the temperatures and it was a bit of a risk with the platforms in general because they are uh, scale model scenery uh, covers as you were um, and it was Jan at Scale Model Scenery who said you can cover them in matte varnish and they've actually weathered uh, winter very well and summer um, after a coating or a couple of coatings of matte varnish so what I'm going to do is uh, fit the uh, stonework sheet to the back behind the station and then from there start some retaining wall and hopefully that should look quite good. Um, once this is in place um, having to remove the canopies um, to be able to do all this it's a good opportunity to tackle a few of the uh, issues with the canopy that have arisen. Um, some of the, like I said earlier, some of the glue hasn't uh, fared through winter very well, um, and some of it's got a bit brittle, so some of the details have come off. So it's a good opportunity to tackle all these issues at once, and hopefully get someone with the layout. So let's get on with that now. So as you've just seen, the first stage was to glue some of the 
uh, card sheets to the uh, plastic card squares I'd already cut out. Now they fit in the gaps, and if I pan you over to the left, they fit in the gaps underneath this white beam here, and then there's also a piece that'll go just in front of this gap, blocking the, uh, the exit hole. Now, the next stage, once they've dried, is just to cut uh, around them, um, and then they should go in nicely. Um, and it's always important when you do things like this, always keep the scrap material, because you never know when it'll come in useful again, um, and uh, it can be mightily handy. So, uh, once these are dried, I'm gonna cut them out, and then uh, we'll stick them in place and see how they look. So as you can see, they're now in. Being freezing in this loft, I'd imagine that's going to take some time to actually stick solid. So I've wedged them up with some uh, items I've found, as you can see, and then uh, <laughs> I'm going to see how long it takes for them to dry um, over winter. Probably a few days, I'd imagine, to be absolutely solid. Now the next job on the agenda, before I continue with the retaining wall going off to the right, um, as you can see, it's left my canopy in a bit of a state. A lot of the columns have fallen down, um, it is rather brittle, and actually that strip of lights here has stopped working, so um, the canopy in general, the framing for it, does need a bit of TLC, so that's the next job. Um, I think, apart from some of the columns going, I need to re-solder a connection up here, um, and then one of the supports, the cross supports, um, has actually fell off as well. And there's, I think I've just seen a sign as well down here. <laughs> so the poor canopy's taken a battering, um, and it's time to give it some love and uh, bring it back up to spec. So with the station uh, bits done, um, it's starting to feel a bit better now that all the little niggles are getting finished. Um, to continue, I wanted to add a bit more detail than just the flat card sheet. So I've actually got myself the stone retaining wall by Metcalf, um, which is code PO245. Um, and to save you... Um, um, a bit of time. I've actually uh, built these in the warm downstairs previously, so I've got my sample ones, they're ready to go, um, and now we're going to install them. Now to add a bit more depth to the uh, the scene, I'm actually going to have the retaining walls come away from the backdrop. Now I'm using a bit of um, packing sponge, um, I've got loads of it from various deliveries, so I thought I'd use it just to uh, prop up the walls, it's nice and flat. Um, and again, a bit spongy so I can paint it up and then cover it with some scenery later on. And flukily, it makes the, uh, uh, it's the same height as the retaining walls. So what you're going to see now is me putting them in place. Um, and then uh, hopefully the scene should start to come together quite nicely. So as you can see that's starting to take shape. I've lightly glued them in place um, and as you can see to the right there the sponge is just below the top level um, so that's going to be high enough for me to put some scenery uh, on it or behind it. Um, now the plan going forward, if I just zoom you back and refocus you in, um, obviously the canopy is going to be here so that'll be taking up the bulk of it so the scenery behind this part of the wall I think is just going to be a bit sort of urban shrubbery that's just grown behind uh, behind the walls. Um, going over to the middle, as the retaining wall will continue, I've decided I'm going to have a, uh, a pilot station uh, for a Thunderbird uh, here, um, and then the retaining wall will continue and leaving room for me to put some, um, I suppose, uh, low relief modern image buildings behind it. 
and hopefully that should look quite good. So the reason I wanted to get the retaining wall done behind the station in particular was because I'm uh, ready to do the canopies and actually cover them over with their detail. So what I needed to do was so I didn't have to keep taking the canopies off, I needed to sort the retaining wall. Um, next they're going to be uh, matte varnished um, and then the ballast is going to be laid in front of them. The matte varnish just makes them a bit more weatherproof and uh, a bit more waterproof towards my uh, glue mix. Um, and then I can focus on doing the the canopies and getting them in place and then never touching them again quite honestly um, so what I'm going to do now is let these dry overnight and uh, see how they look and uh, in a second you'll see uh, hopefully it all put back together and just like that there we go all back together now as you can see for such a simple change it really has um, changed the layout no end um, and it really starts to bring it all home it makes the station, oddly to me, feel a bit more grand. Um, if I just lower you down to track level, <clears throat> the idea was, as you're looking down it, you can't now see the uh, the sidings, which are right down the back, and there's no gaping hole anymore. I will try and continue that uh, to the left there, but uh, no, that's perfect. Um, and as you can see, I can now get nice camera shots of trains coming in, as we see here with my Euro Phoenix. Um, and the scenery is uh, almost intact. So that's pretty much it for this update. What I'm going to do now is uh, continue on building more retaining walls and continue that on and try and get going for my uh, February update which is only um, a week away. So uh, you'll have to join me on that. Talking of my February update I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. Um, some of you will know that over Christmas I did uh, try and build myself some salmon wagons, some offsprays. Um, however, my I did lose a memory card, or a memory card corrupted, I should say. But here is the train. Um, I don't think it's been seen yet on camera, but uh, thought I'd give you a little sneak peek for those of you who uh, watch through this uh, video. But uh, as you can see, this is uh, my track train, um, which I think really adds to New Junction as a whole because obviously New Junction comes from the fact that uh, they're building a New Junction. So uh, what better than to uh, make myself a Freightliner, Freightliner, a track train for Network Rail. Right, I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you as ever for watching. Stay tuned for more and uh, I think the February update will be uh, very soon. Thanks guys, take care.